Oh, would you look at that? I have a hat. Character customization. I feel like this is something that gets overlooked when talking about video games, when in reality this is probably one of the most important topics to discuss. I mean, creating your own character to your preferences is something almost entirely unique to video games themselves. You can't just go watch a movie and change what the main character is wearing to something else. Or if you're reading a book, you can't just make the protagonist shorter or taller. And most importantly, in real life, you can't just walk into a barber shop and come out with naturally longer hair than what you entered with. But in video games, you can. I love character customization in just about anything. Honestly, most of the reason I even got Snapchat was just to mess around with bitmojis, only to find out that's just a standalone app. Anyway, customizing your own character is an ancient concept by now and nothing new or revolutionary. It is just about as old as gaming itself by now. So what do I consider character customization? Well, in my opinion, I consider this any time a game lets you choose something about your player character that could be different from how someone else may choose, like how you look, what you wear, your attributes, etc. Now, how much freedom you're allowed to use, if any freedom at all, when customizing your character is up to which game you're playing. Some games let you customize everything about how you look, sound, and even more, while some games maybe let you have a few cosmetics to mess around with at best. For example, in the very first Legend of Zelda game, you were given the option to change your character's name, and that's it. But in the latest entry, Breath of the Wild, you can't! But, 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 you can change your appearance with what armor pieces you choose to wear, but you can't name yourself Ralph. This choice of freedom that video games give to a player is what can drastically differentiate each and every experience people may have with that game. Just look at any MMO, that's a massively multiplayer online game. You can see just how differently everyone will approach designing their character. Some people go for a reflection of themselves, some people go for something entirely different, and of course there always has to be that one guy who's dressed up like the Dark Knight equivalent of a Ram 1500 truck going 120 down the highway with their brights on. What are you compensating for? But this is their character, unique from nearly anyone else's design, and unless the game lets you change your character stats, character customization is essentially functionless towards how the game plays. It's purely a visual option for players. but. Clearly people like it since so many games have character creating features. Usually it's pretty obvious, if you boot up a game and see that generic white guy staring back at you with some slider options, you're in for a good time. Change around that face and a body to be exactly how you want it, and you have your custom character. Gone are the days of being stuck with the predetermined character models that, that the video game publisher decides on. But sometimes you will be a few hours into a game before you get the customization options. You start with the generic, predetermined character model, but eventually you can change it up. Pokemon games, for example, have gone about this approach where after a while of playing you'll gain access to shops where you can buy clothes and accessories for your character. You can also start to change up your hairstyle, color, eye color, stuff like that too. I don't think that either way is better than the other, but I will say I always get pretty excited when I boot up a game and notice that you can customize a character before starting, especially if it was a surprise to me and I didn't know that beforehand. And although you may spend hours and hours customizing the perfect character for yourself, it's that first 5 minutes before you get your armor set that is the best. The time you spend playing as your creation just before hiding it away behind a defense stat, it's the best time you will have in that game. A lot of games have this fault, back when I first played Skyrim I was just discovering what it meant to become a man and therefore gave myself a little mustache. Months later and plenty of hours into the game I had taken off my helmet and was immediately embarrassed by my past mistakes when that aforementioned mustache was staring right back at me. But it was my mustache. I chose to have that. I also chose to never take off my helmet again, but that's beside the point. While I've mostly stuck to RPG and fantasy style games, there's a plethora of games in all sorts of different genres that offer plenty of character customization options to the player. Take Minecraft, a survival sandbox game for example. There's an infinite number of ways that you could customize your character's skin, but no matter how you look, you will always have the same functionality as everyone else who plays that game. You can wear a dream skin all you want, but that isn't going to change the fact that it's your fault you have two Christmases now. Fortnite, for better or for worse, has completely changed the way skins are available in video games, working by offering them through a limited time shop or battle pass. And Cyberpunk 2077 has set a new standard in gaming by allowing players to customize, well, their genitalia. Innovation comes in mysterious ways. You know, there are some games that are just character creators. Epic Games' MetaHuman Creator is literally just a custom character creator. It's not so much of a game, rather it is creating custom characters for animation or to use in your own games. 
Some games have heavy emphasis on the character customization, like The Sims or Spore. The whole point of Spore is to create and customize your own alien race, that it can survive and become an apex species to intergalactic proportions. But then there are games like Ark Survival Evolved, where the character customization is borderline criminal with what you can create. This is proof that we have strayed too far from God and that we are inherently evil. Born and sa- Oh hey, would you look at that? I have a hat. There is countless examples out there of video games allowing players character customization options. But I wanted to list out just a few small examples, just to kind of talk about how a few of these games do it, and a few common examples of what a lot of games will tend to typically do. Typically, you get the base default character that you can move a few sliders or change a few of the options on to get roughly what you want. And, you know, if it's not that, it's usually they'll allow you to get a couple cosmetics to put on a pre-existing model. Those two are typically what you'll see, although that's not to say these are the two standards. Plenty of games, like I've kind of mentioned, just do their own thing, like Minecraft allowing you to completely just retexture your own skin. Sometimes, adding customization options to your game is a surefire way to get people more interested in it and to trick them into thinking it's actually better than it is. Take Super Mario Odyssey, for instance. Okay, don't get me wrong, I love this game to death and I think it's absolutely amazing, but a lot of the hype comes from the fact that you can dress up or undress Mario any way you want, given all of the cosmetics in the game. This fundamentally adds next to nothing to the game, but it wouldn't be the same without it. How is that? How is something that does not affect the game whatsoever also be so instrumental in how we see and judge it? Truth be told, I don't have an exact answer. My best guess is that all these games help players connect even closer to them. It's no longer just a playable character. It's you. Or at least to some extension it is. You helped make it to some capacity. You contributed. There was a personal choice and attachment to these games now. Personally, just taking a look at a few of my favorite games, an overwhelming majority of them have some sort of character customization options in them. Maybe I'm just partial and biased to games with character customization options, or maybe I have some sort of complex and just have to always be myself because no one is better than me and no, you're not the main character, I am. But I think that everyone can agree that it's always better to have even the smallest option of character customization than not to have any at all. I mean, at the end of the day, who doesn't want to have the option to have a little hat?